Hello, good morning. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our third Baltic-Sea Youth Dialogue session on Looking Forward, Looking Back, 30 Years of Collaboration in the Baltic Sea Region. It was nice to meet so many of you over the past uh, two evenings when we had the first sessions and great speakers with us talking about and discussing with us questions regarding the safety and security as well as um, environmental situation and collaboration around the Baltic Sea region. Today, the area of starting point is regional identity, regional and cultural collaboration. So maybe let's jump in directly. Our first speaker this morning is Mr. Elsa Kokkonen, director of the Baltic Institute of Finland, who has vast knowledge and great experience with cooperation in the Baltic Sea region. And it is uh, such a pleasure to have you, Elsa, especially on a Saturday morning. So we really appreciate that. Welcome. And uh, the floor, the screen is yours. Great, thank, thank you so much, uh, Francisca and Aline, for inviting me to this, this event. And, uh, and uh, it's a great pleasure, definitely, and uh, such an uh, event with, uh, with uh, 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 focus on, on looking back 30 years and looking, look, looking, looking at future in this time, this very interesting, <laughs> exciting, challenging times. And, uh, having a group of, of young people from all over the region gathering for three days, like, like in your, your meeting under CBS's umbrella. This is exactly what we, we, we need now, this kind of a discussions. And, uh, and uh, uh, thanks, thanks once again for, for inviting me. Uh, greetings from uh, Turku, Obu, Finland. This is, uh, I'm having a little, uh, uh, weekend <laughs> trip here uh, 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 with with friends, but I'm very happy to to join. I'm here actually in the hotel where we are staying. I, I booked uh, this is a huge <laughs> kind of a conference room, so it feels like I'm a I'm a you uh, know in, in a BSR event, but totally alone here in the in the, <laughs> in the in the podium. Basically, this is very interesting interesting experience experience of 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 typical experience you know, of, of these last two years when we are just meeting online but uh but like like today it's possible for us to 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 get together and uh and and, and uh, uh without traveling <laughs> this is this is sustainable and uh we can do this often this is this is um it's, it's not not expensive and uh but this is how the bsr cooperation today is run but yeah, my name is yeah, Esa Kokkonen, and I'm, I've been working for Baltic Sea Cooperation in Baltic Sea Cooperation basically my whole whole career. So when um, just a little introduction. So uh, uh, I studied here in, in in University of Turku, where where um, in the city where we're visiting today. Studied in, uh, political science and international relations, and uh, uh, of course EU affairs in, in early 90s when I was studying here that was a big there was a big interest uh, among young people studying politics and, and interested in, in international collaboration Finland was applying for EU membership that time and then joined 95 and uh, I didn't know that time that uh, that my future career uh, would be focusing on, on on Baltic Sea cooperation but uh, then when the uh, opportunity emerged, Basically, almost right after when I graduated, there was a, a small organization in, in Tampere, Finland, just 150 kilometers from, from Turku to north, the second city of Finland. And uh, uh, in, in Tampere, the Baltic Institute of Finland was, had been established in 94. That was a time when when it was very busy time for for kind of a re-establishment uh, of of Baltic Sea cooperation structures and organizations as we know them today, CBSS as a, as an intergovernmental organization, and uh, then there were networks uh, organizations established in in 
basically in, in, in very almost all sectors of society and between different stakeholders. Regions have their own uh, cooperation, be it Triple SC, uh, and then, then Union of the Baltic Cities was established around that time. And uh, in Finland, there was so then discussion that how should we react to this new situation uh, in, in the region after the Cold War and, uh, and collapse of the Soviet Union. And then the Baltic Institute of Finland was one of the Finnish reactions to this. And it was then um, uh, Tampere uh, as, a, as a inland city uh, regarded that, that, that this is something where uh, we want to participate and uh, that, uh, and we understood that in Tampere that it's not just a, a maritime collaboration that we are talking about, but this is a, a political, economic, cultural entity. Uh, and uh, and uh, uh, then uh, based on that background, uh, the Institute started there and then there uh, it was very small activities, very uh, just a uh, kind of a getting organized. Etc. And then in 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 early 2000, they 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 wanted to kind of relaunch the act, kind of activities and start the practical collaboration and especially the project work. And they were looking for for it was in the in the job announce, announcement that they were looking for young youngish youngish director. So it was a, exactly so that time I was young enough definitely I was <laughs> that was uh, and I thought yes. This is a, this is an interesting opportunity and applied. I was first basically alone, then there was two of us, and then step by step, so uh, the, the the projects and, and activities started to develop and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, yeah. Now after more than twenty years, we've been uh, doing some one hundred fifty projects and uh, and uh, uh, in different sectors and. Uh, of course, this is a project work, so there are project uh, uh, contracts for for uh, people. We are still a small organization. There are uh, six of us, but we all are working full time for Baltic Sea Cooperation. So it's still a, 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 a good resource to, to, to make an impact. And when we are connected to the city of Tampere in Finland, uh, which supports us financially, gives us necessary kind of a seed funding and basic funding for the project development and, and required own funding so so uh, and our task is to to generate activities for 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 others so it's not not about our own growth but about about helping especially of course our home city and its stakeholders to find partners and find funding opportunities and uh, then we have this special role in the uh, uh, in in the in the larger BSR context, we are we are involved in in EU as BSR EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region and coordinating policy area innovation because that's the topic where we have the strongest background in our project. So so in that capacity, we are serving the whole whole region and this is also a task where I am uh, allocating most of my my working time. So. Uh, this um, work uh, and coordination of the uh, EU strategy for the for the Baltic Sea region, but this is uh, my my background for this this work. So uh, uh, it's been very interesting times, and and uh, not each year has been different. And now it's it's definitely interesting to look back at at this first this uh, this uh, even late nineties, early two thousand times of the and and uh, and and. Uh, um, and what, how was the cooperation that time? Even when reading some of the first and some of the early documents and plans and strategies of, from that time, our own strategies, or uh, and how it was actually very positive look at, and we we thought that that uh, that um, we re wrong, strongly believed, and that was a general sentiment in the Baltic Sea region that time that this will definitely become a very very integrated region where where labor and uh, and uh, people are moving uh, freely across borders and uh, it's easy to 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 move to another country and uh, this kind of a labor mobility and other mobility that makes this 
a region of small countries, mainly very dynamic and stronger together. And then it was, uh, uh, it was such a big change after, after the many decades of Cold War and, uh, and the closed borders and, uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and uh, unsolved challenges, environmental challenges, especially that now when, when suddenly the borders uh, opened and, uh, and, uh, and uh, cooperation uh, and, and, call, uh, and exchange of different kinds became possible in a totally new way. Of course, that was a, that was a special moment. But uh, I think that uh, we have achieved a lot when we look at all of us who know the region, live in the region, uh, and and uh, and uh, uh, of course this is a totally different different region now. But still, still we need to remind ourselves of the of the basics uh, that that there's still a lot of that, a lot of that uh, kind of a. Uh, cohesion and integration that we sometimes think that we already are leaders in 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 Europe and globally uh, and and what uh, what comes to collaboration and uh, uh, cross border business and investments or or mobility or or then uh, balanced uh, regional and economic development it's it's not we are not model uh, region yet they are still obviously the big thing is that these uh, major challenges that uh, that are the key driver for the regional collaboration. The, the first of all, the state of the of the Baltic Sea itself. It, there's still work ahead, a lot a lot of work, and and we need to be uh, better in collaborating and and in in that and uh, and saving the saving the sea. It's still one of the most polluted seas in the world. And uh, and uh, this is this is still a huge task for the for the region for decades to come. And then, of course, uh, when we look at the uh, political uh, state or or how how uh, how our kind of a uniform goals and uh, and uh, and uh, strategies we have. There's still a, a, we are not uh, effective uh, enough in that either. They are they are uh, just alone uh, looking at uh, EU policies. We are mainly EU region today. That is our huge opportunity to 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 drive uh, 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 the regional collaboration through European Union. Uh, uh, policies and instruments and in the European Union framework still uh, how well are we able to utilize these European opportunities together and to coordinate our EU strategies our our on how we use the EU funds and uh, and uh, this it's still easily that we turn inwards and we just try to maximize maximize the interest for our own countries and, and regions and we still have a lot of differences on on the on the kind of a on on, on the on the way we uh, way we see the uh, uh, European cooperation there's even in high level political level of course we all know the the biggest challenge for for EU and and and, and politics of, of of whole Europe and globally of course this rising nationalism and, and populism and uh, then related EU criticism and and uh, uh, all the uh, migration related uh, and racism uh, 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 that is that is has been uh, growing in the region. That that those are the trends that have also made uh, weakened. They have made Baltic Sea region and Baltic Sea cooperation weaker. And uh, then of course what happened uh, almost two years ago when this. Uh, uh, COVID-19 crisis emerged. Of course, this caused uh, uh, another uh, huge acute challenge for the regional cooperation and turned us increasingly inwards. When we already, before that, in pre preceding years, had had been facing this rise of the of the uh, nationalism and populism 
and EU criticism. And then when there's a crisis, uh, we are uh, suddenly more isolated. And uh, also in the crisis recovery on, on, on how to tackle the crisis, uh, 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 we, at least in the beginning, we, we were, we kind of, a, it was a test also for Baltic Sea cooperation that, that how, how much and how, how we can, we can uh, share resources and help each other. And that applied to whole EU. We didn't, uh, uh, nobody thought about that. It was just all the countries uh, turned inward and, and tried to try to save and, and focus on their, uh, on themselves. Now, of course, we've been, we in, in the whole European Union level, we've been uh, learning and, 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 and also about the importance of, 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 of working together uh, in, in, in this kind of a crisis, acute crisis situation, and it's in its aftermath and, uh, and a recovery phase. Uh, we can see that this is now changing and we can turn the crisis into an opportunity. But this, what I just told, meant that, that even though we can celebrate the last 30 years, and I'm, I'm, it's also personally something that I'm, I feel, feel really fortunate and, uh, and uh, great, grateful that I've been able to, to be part of this for most of that time and to, to see the development and, 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 and start from the very basic level project of just networking and matchmaking and getting to know each other. Now, then moving on to very practical, very uh, advanced uh, forms of collaboration where, where uh, businesses are engaged and, uh, and uh, students are, are uh, and, and, and universities are working together and solving a, a, a practical uh, uh, challenges together and developing uh, new solutions and, and, and improving the well-being of the of the of the region and the citizens uh, together. So when uh, this is a great experience, but still uh, still uh, we need to remind ourselves of these first and early early uh, visions. Of the of the region we had in in in, in early 90s that that this would really become a, 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 a kind of a economic entity that is well integrated and where where people would feel like that that that, that they are from the Baltic Sea region and uh, and that would be visible in 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 uh, in uh, 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 in in a in a way that it's 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 uh, pe people know the region very well. They they are more they move more ac uh, across uh, around the region, and uh, and uh, we can see the the collaboration uh, uh, that it it, it 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 improves the infrastructures and and accessibility uh, of of the region and uh, and. Uh, Politically, whether no matter what party is in 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 in, in power in each country, still we, we would share the the common uh, uh, goals and 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 always work towards these goals. It's still it's still <laughs> there's still a lot of work uh, ahead for that, and uh, this is kind of a, a my uh, lose. An analysis or 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 summary of 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 uh, of the journey from from the early nineties to 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 today, but then we could uh, uh, check the current or or and especially look at the fu future and, and 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 near future opportunities and current situation and especially look at at uh, uh, this. Uh, European uh, framework for our collaboration, and uh, that's of course in the in the that's that's a, uh, then uh, formulated in in the form of of uh, EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region that we uh, thirteen years ago uh, uh, developed and launched for the region. Uh, uh, after these uh, uh, 90s and early 2000 uh, uh, focus, when 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 uh, 
Baltic Sea region was very much about uh, uh, kind of a supporting the EU enlargement process. First in 90s, there was uh, Sweden and Finland joining us as new EU member countries. And then, then later, later uh, uh, Baltic states, uh, Poland joined. So that, that is a big story of the, of the, of the region. So the, that this has become a, 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 a kind of a EU region. And then even our neighboring countries, non-EU member, member countries like uh, Norway, especially, is, is, has been fully <laughs> almost part of that, even uh, without uh, uh, being a member of, of EU. Norway has been part of this, this European uh, and, uh, 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 process, EU, EU driven uh, uh, Baltic Sea cooperation. And then, of course, we have seen, uh, especially in the 90s, early 2000, there was a, a very strong. Uh, dialogue and development between Russian uh, 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 in integration to the region and uh, EU-Russia dialogue. And here in the, in the Baltic Sea region, we had a northern dimension policy that is still existing. And, uh, and Russia was actively, uh, Northwestern Russia was actively engaged in the, in the, in the, in the Baltic Sea uh, uh, projects, multilateral projects, and, uh, and uh, 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 that, that, that has been also uh, under or in the framework of, of this, uh, this uh, EU-driven uh, cooperation and development in the Baltic Sea region. Of course, in, la in, in recent years, then uh, what comes to, 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 to Russia as a, one of the, of course, key uh, parts of the of the and key players of the of the of the region of course that has been more challenging we all know the background we all know the region and this is also another reminder that we have also taken steps uh, backwards in this cooperation we have seen better times much much better times what comes to to involvement and engagement of russia in in the baltic sea region we in already in almost in late 90s and early 2000, especially some years between 2005, 2011, 12, they were really, really interesting and active times of, 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 of Russians uh, in involvement in the cooperation. Just in my own organization that time, we, we had at best, best times, we had six people uh, uh, who, who only worked for Russia cooperation full time. We had dozens of projects running. There was Interreg uh, project where Russians actively participated. There was TASIS EU funding instrument. There were neighboring area funding instruments by Finnish government that, that supported uh, 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 an, uh, Russian, Russia cooperation. Nordic Council ministers actively supported uh, uh, Russia projects. And uh, I really miss those years. And I, I would like to see those those times coming back but we of course know that it's 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 uh, there have been un unfortunate developments in the in the region and uh, and uh, and uh, in this respect and in, in in Russia and we hope that uh, like like the fact that suddenly a few years ago we were in the situation when when uh, a Nordic Council of Ministers the most kind of a, a neutral the most uh, diplomatic uh, socially uh, oriented, soft topic oriented organization that you can imagine. They were kind of uh, declared uh, as a foreign agent in, in Russia and their activities in, in Northwest Russia and their office in, in St. Petersburg had suddenly very, very limited uh, opportunities to do anything. That we see, we saw such a, uh, such a development that was so very, very unfortunate and uh, and we really hope that 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 the the, the development towards a new kind of a, a, a dialogue and exchange uh, between Russia and, and and Baltic Sea region in this multilateral framework would 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 start to develop. And of course, uh, this is very much then about uh, 
uh, about uh, citizen level and community level. And that's why this kind of a fora like, like youth dialogue in the Baltic Sea region uh, or, or different other activities where, uh, where people are in the center. And it's about, about exchange and, uh, and a cooperation between, between uh, uh, people, whether they are uh, that some, uh, some uh, whether it's a research collaboration or educational collaboration or business, but uh, that we, we, it's still possible. And, uh, and that's, that's the basis that we need to, especially when, when there are challenges in political level and, and uh, the, or then we need to increasingly underline and, uh, and, uh, and focus on, on people to people collaboration and contacts. And uh, that's what creates then the basis for, 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 for future. And, uh, and then when the political situation is more favorable, uh, we are st we still we are well connected and, and we know each other and we are ready to take uh, to, to, to take another uh, step forward and uh, and uh, first of all to get back to this situation where we were some uh, 15 10 15 years ago when when this this uh, collaboration with Russia alone was was much more active but uh, then maybe to to some to to to, to at the end now our time is running I need to stop so uh, just a few words about that that uh, what what this uh, future collaboration what are the topics and uh, and uh, what is what is now the uh, what's on the agenda of EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region uh, so as mentioned I'm coordinating the the uh, policy area innovation under EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region and uh, it's of course one of the most uh, uh, active or interesting policy areas because uh, when we look at the funding EU funding opportunities there's a lot of funding uh, available for innovation related collaboration that whether it's about whether we talk about interreg programs or or structural funds uh, uh, or or horizon uh, Europe uh, there's a lot of a uh, investments now allocated and funding allocated for for uh, for the development of 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 uh, uh, especially new green and and digital solutions and uh, of course everything is now about green and digital transition that's the overall goal for for the uh, European Union uh, uh, in investments in 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 in, in uh, uh, sustainable growth and uh, and uh, development and innovation and that's also the framework and and, and the goal of course uh, in the Baltic Sea region. So, uh, but then the question is that what is then the role of of this kind of a macro regional cooperation? Because easily then we just basically repeat that, that we just talk the same. We just uh, basically uh, um, talk about overall European Union goals when we talk about Green Deal or EU's digital compass. We then the question right, emerges easily that okay, this is yeah, <laughs> this is a framework, and this is where we also uh, the uh, the countries in the Baltic Sea region, as EU countries or EU partner countries, we we are. Uh, we, we are part of that and, and we, will, we will contribute to that policy and we will utilize the related EU instruments uh, uh, um, and uh, we, we, we collaborate in Europe in, 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 in that work. But then what is then, what, what should, should we do, especially here in the region between the countries uh, in, in, of the Baltic Sea region? What, what is the difference? that? This is another challenge also when I was talking earlier very strongly about the, this EU framework and importance of this EU agenda for the Baltic Sea region. I understand that the risk is that we kind of weaken the, the, the special uh, uh, kind of a mandate or special opportunity for the, for the macro-regional collaboration that 
than a, a company or university that we are uh, we are approaching or 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 talking uh, about the Baltic Sea strategy. They might ask, yes, yeah, we, this is, sounds great. We already collaborate in the European Union, what, and uh, we we are interested in the whole e European market, and we have a partners all over Europe. So, what is what is your offering? What is our? Why should we just focus on the Baltic Sea region? And this is a very good question. And uh, but I still uh, and there's evidence from the when we look at the just our businesses on how much of e intra uh, regional trade our businesses are doing. And when the and when when the companies are starting to think about the internalization and exporting and and uh, that how much they they first look at the neighboring uh, 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 countries and how much we are doing that intra BSR trade and then same with investments there's a lot of intra BSR investments we are actually doing a lot of business together and when we look at the mergers of the big companies there are a lot of a uh, lot of mergers and and and, and between uh, uh, companies here in the in the region uh, and uh, and uh, uh, also in in tourism we have major kind of a internal potential that people are interested in in the in this region particularly and of course this the fact that we have we are the main common element is that we are mainly small countries we are all uh, generally quite peripheral part per peripheral countries in eu and and when when this uh, uh, in the new uh, uh, enlarged EU and in this whole global context and competition, it makes sense and it to to for small uh, 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 neighbors to join forces that that we, we can we can be stronger together and and uh, we can also share our limited uh, resources and 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 there utilize them in a way that there's a synergy and and benefit uh, of of doing that together compared to to the Situation when we would just look at the look at ourselves as 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 uh, as uh, as part of Europe and uh, and uh, working uh, uh, just trying to find our place in European networks and value chains or or not to mention the global global competition and there's evidence from the business uh, from the research from from also uh, 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 local and regional level that especially the local and regional level actually. The, the cities and regions they have they have they have realized that that when they are like-minded and similar partners that are close to you that have a similar responsibilities and similar challenges and uh, uh, it it really it's a good way for 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 uh, for for cities for example to 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 uh, uh, find resources and, and 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 solutions to the to the challenges by by working together with a with a with a, with the partner cities which are similar and uh, are close to you and uh, and uh, they are also a good way of of making you visible that together we can be more visible and stronger in 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 in, in Europe in general and this is what I. Think that this is a very a future of the Baltic Sea region. That it doesn't necessarily mean that we are just collaborating uh, between each other, but this is a platform for us to to do together be stronger and more visible in Europe and also globally. That this is kind of a, the EU agenda, and this is a task for the EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region. That we are. We are using this strategy and our history of collaboration, our next net networks and organizations like CBSS or, or UBC, to use them as a platforms to to to, uh, to 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 take active and a more visible role globally and and in EU, and uh, so that we are not building a silo of of macro regional collaboration here, but we are we are uh, together. Uh, contributing to the green deal and and digital transition and and eu's global competitiveness we are we are we are developing and uh, our contribution through through collaboration 
And when we are mainly young and small EU countries, we still have also a lot to learn. If you want, if you want to be competitive in EU, like in Horizon program, we in, compared to the big and, and strong and uh, old EU member countries, uh, we, we, if, if you want to be competitive, we need to be able to work together. And the topics like, uh, like, like uh, sustainable urban development or, or different data-driven solutions where just alone the, that we need to build a bigger critical mass. We need more data and we need that, that, that uh, if, we, if, we are, if we are able to utilize our, our uh, uh, digital competencies and infrastructures and then the data together share that, that, that makes very interesting platform for, for the new solutions. And that's very valuable asset uh, for the for the region. That if we share our also our 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 uh, our data and are able to develop uh, common solutions which also work uh, smoothly across borders and people, then that it's also bring leads to to visible uh, 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 solutions in everyday life, wh whether it's about traveling or 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 uh, prescriptions or 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 uh, mobile services or 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 anything and uh, then startups and entrepreneurship this is where we where the critical mass and uh, and the pooling of resources and talent really makes sense if we want to want to uh, uh, kind of uh, use our our uh, 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 Still, we are small countries mainly. But when we when we join forces in 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 in, uh, in as we are each country and, and is investing a lot in developing in new businesses and startups. But if we do that together, also that bring talent together, enable uh, cross border uh, team building and and forming of 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 new companies, uh, uh, international cross border companies. We haven't done it. We have been piloting that. There's some some uh, accelerator activities and co-creation activities have been piloted, but we are, ha haven't mainstreamed that. We, we don't have the cross-border uh, entrepreneurship or startup programs yet. They're just uh, one of experiments. We are not doing that like, uh, like uh, uh, as a strategic part of our, our uh, business development activities. That might uh, just come with the young listeners that we have here listening yeah. today. Yes. But I, I've exceeded my time already, so I need to stop now. And then, but this is very much about now we need to, after the crisis especially, we need to, we need to uh, uh, now, now shift a bit, uh, not a bit, but a lot. We need to shift the focus to people and to, to citizens and communities. We've been in last few years, maybe also in the EU strategy, focused too much on this kind of a overall EU policy framework and a big uh, kind of a policy uh, goals and, uh, and, uh, and, and, uh, and uh, developing our cooperation structures. But uh, when we look at the involvement of, of citizens in our activities, that they, they might, activities might be very good in, in some, some kind of a, in, uh, in the policy uh, coordination level or, or so that we are able to, to, to start some, some uh, 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 joint, uh, mm -hmm. joint research, or 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 or, uh, or develop some uh, uh, circular economy strategies and policies, and do some yeah. piloting together, or or some blue growth uh, related uh, cluster activities. But when we look at the look at the citizens and how and 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 uh, communities, that should be our strength, especially that we. Yeah that we, we see that the inactivities actually they are they are people who also collaborate and people who see that see, see the benefit and don't just uh, that basically easily we, we look outside only as a, that okay this is just a general eu policy coordination and, and and dialogue that we are doing and easily if we lose that that kind of a touch and uh and uh visibility and involvement of 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 citizens yeah. and communities yes. and i'm sorry to interrupt you here but yes. exactly that involvement yeah. is really important and um yes. we have 
questions coming up at this point. Yes, so I, I stop now. I, this is this is this is thanks thanks a lot. And uh, if there are any questions, comments, I would be very happy to to answer. Yeah, thank you so much, Isa. So that was great and very inspiring. So sorry to interrupt, really, but then let's go with the first question, Daria, maybe. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Kokonen, uh, for your presentation. My name is Daria Larionov, and I have two questions for you. First of all, uh, what is uh, the role of strengthening democracy in the framework of Baltic Sea cooperation, in your opinion? And how do you assess the role of youth in that? Thank you very much. So meaning the strength, strengthening of democracy. Yeah. Yes. Uh, very, very imp important uh, that, of course, referring to the challenges and this kind of a very uh, negative trends and development that, that, that really have, have been a, a very visible and, and part of the, of the European Union recently, that, that how the, how the uh, uh, whether it's about freedom of speech or, or or, or, or human rights have been under threat and under attack, and this is, of course, then, then the, and then the, all the, all the, of course, even though we haven't been uh, affected, luckily, but we have been. Our democracy has been strong that we haven't been uh, kind of a, uh, seriously attacked in, in what comes to all these cyber, cyber, uh, uh, and. and uh, uh, and uh, attacks and 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 uh, that we we know from the USA or or from Brexit. Of course, this is happening in, in the Baltic Sea region as well. But this this is also that we are not uh, immune to that. That we 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 sometimes think that we are all, always on the top of Europe. We are the most advanced part of Europe, and we are uh, everything is what the well-being uh, indicators are great or or equality related indicators. But we are not. It 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 also affects us, and maybe our biggest challenge is that that if we if we are if we are too self confident and 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 think that and not pay attention to to this and this in in Finland we are in many many uh, uh, global rankings we are in 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 leading what comes to quality of life or 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 freedom of speech or 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 then the the democracy, but uh, we have the same. Same problem, and uh, and I, we see the the uh, voting uh, turnovers uh, uh, dropping, and uh, and uh, young people. Uh, there's a there's a uh, just when when they are social uh, 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 social or or regional uh, equality in Finland, for example, when the cities are growing very fast. This this means that there's a new kind of a equality emerging between the between the peripheral parts of the of the country and the cities, and then even in the cities when they are growing, there are there are some new social uh, 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 kind of a challenges emerging. So that it's very much about about of course <laughs> fighting these these inequalities and social uh, challenges that 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 we are facing that may lead into to also. To to the weakening of the democracy. So all the all the activities to to empower engage young people and also to 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 make sure that we are attractive enough for we also are uh, our population we are we are not growing the birth rates are low and then at the same time we are not attractive enough for for Im immigrants. So we still think that we can we can manage it. We can be very critical, like. Like an example, Denmark, how 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 tight and uh, how how tough their migration policies are. It's amazing that this is this is a current reality in the region, mm -hmm. and we are not even welcoming and opening. And that made at the same time kind of a uh, uh, there's a huge risk that also we we kind of a. Lose, Daria, lose I hope the, that answered your question yeah. a bit um, so that we might get to the next one because yeah, I thank feel there is you. Thank so you very much, much. <laughs> talk about this and so many great examples. So, but yeah, sorry. Um, next, Carolina. 
Thank you for a very interesting lecture. I have a question to you. Now, at the time of pandemic, what can be done better to achieve better cooperation at regional level? Hmm. This is uh, the pandemic, like mentioned, that if there are anything good about this, of course, this is a horrible crisis and uh, still what's happening in the that the, the, this is still acute, this is still ongoing. But of course, we have started to open and started to step by step to, to, to get back to normal. And of course, we have the vaccination. But uh, this is exactly that, that when we have experienced such a crisis, it was also, uh, uh, of course, kind of a test for, for on, on, on how, uh, how strong actually we are in cooperation. And uh, it, it, it revealed a lot of weaknesses. But now, now there's an, this is a kind of an opportunity for a fresh start. Also, especially from the sustainability point of view, of course, that, that, uh, 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 that we have understood the acuteness of this, uh, this, uh, this uh, climate crisis. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, when, 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 uh, when this uh, health crisis and this, this uh, uh, when we needed to, to sit down and think and uh, we were not able to travel and we, 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 we were also forced to think about it, how, how, how could we do things differently? And uh, this is, we have to utilize this opportunity. There's a risk that we go back easily to the old, but uh, this is, I still am positive. I can see that, that this is kind of a understanding and awareness of the, of the need for change and a need for tr real transition has, has happened after the crisis that that even though they are not necessarily connected but uh, but kind of, kind of a, it was a, it was a moment to 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 stop for a while and think and at, at the same time when we saw the very serious consequences of the climate crisis this summer and uh, and are now discussed in Glasgow so we we realized that uh, that now is the time to do the change and uh, and uh, and the real transition and uh, it kind of a forced us to think about the crisis, forced us to, us to think about the basic social foundation, that what is the, what is the, that are we, the health alone, are, are we safe in that? Are we strong enough to, 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 to really protect people's lives and their, and, uh, and uh, I can see that this is, there's a more, more kind of a stronger awareness uh, in, 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 in also like in business sectors, in many, many ways leading that, 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 that we talk much more openly and, and uh, we have much more stronger ambition about really doing this, this sustainable transition. And this is what I think that where Baltic Sea cooperation, uh, if, we can, if we are able to, to show this in our, that we, we kind of, a, we also represent this, this uh, uh, more ambition, uh, ambitious agenda and uh, with the concrete people driven activities if we can do it this can be a new start or a, a new uh, for the for the for another success story of the baltic sea cooperation but this is next year is very critical there a lot of funding available now a lot of new activities will be started if we if they don't represent real change and if they don't provide practical solutions in everyday life then we have failed. We can. This is a. This is a. This is in next two years. We need to be able to 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 show this. We have to do the things differently and more sustainably, uh, as well. We we haven't been sustainable enough in this cooperation either, and uh, we have still thought that we are already very advanced and everything is great here. It's not. And uh, um, thank. Good question. About sustainability a lot uh, as well uh, yesterday. So that was yeah. a good um, connection and follow up to that. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting. Thanks. Thank Thanks so much. <laughs> Maybe we can take both Lily Bell's and Louisa's questions so that you answer uh, to both of them. And uh, we want to listen to Aline as well. Um, Lily Bell, Louisa, your questions, please. Hi, I wanted to thank you for such an interesting talk for this. Um, and I just wanted to ask about, um, you mentioned obviously the rise of nationalism and populism globally, but also in the region. Um, and I wanted to ask, do you think there could be a kind of unique leading role for the, um, for the region and kind of helping counteract that? Sorry, there was a little, I didn't, uh, there was a little, little uh, 
unclear the connection or or could you repeat once again the question could could we regarding the the, the populism and nationalism the, the question yes, yes sorry and um, i wanted to know do you think um that the baltic sea region could have a unique kind of leading role in counteracting populist populism yeah, very good very good thanks thanks a lot very good question uh a leading leading role yes i, I think that there's still some 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 kind of a foundations Strong foundations that 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 we we still have in our 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 uh, uh, societies and our 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 political systems that there's there's a, and uh, and just a, the freedom of, of speech and uh, and a freedom of, of, of the, the 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 media etc. Et so that that there's a they are kind of a obvious uh, strengths and then just looking at how how what has happened in eu and and, and globally uh, in the last few years the, the trump and brexit and uh, of course very unfortunate developments in hungary and 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 and, and, and poland and and poland is part of the region by, by the way but what and uh, but seeing also that that uh, 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 there's like like just taking taking Poland for example, Gdansk, which is one of the centers of the and and, and really uh, kind of a, a centers of the Baltic Sea cooperation. That's a, that's where 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 still there's a there's a that 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 people are 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 they don't they are not afraid of 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 really making their voice heard or 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 demonstrating when 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 it's it's needed and and uh, there's a certain kind of a in in the northern northern Europe and in 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 our our uh, political culture, there's there are certain assets that that we should make more visible and and count on and uh, and strengthen that and uh, really to 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 maybe also uh, to together show it in the Baltic Sea cooperation. We haven't had much of the maybe Baltic Sea cooperation in this topic. So that's good kind of a hint that you provided that maybe we could somehow make that visible and say that. What are the what are the Baltic Sea region assets and, and opportunities to fight fight uh, the the the, uh, the the these these trends and uh, not meaning that, that we should do it in a way that we we just just uh, 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 somehow strengthen the the uh, contradictions or 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 that that attack somebody or or criticize somebody but just to 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 take the positive. Uh, uh, make the positive developments visible. Yeah. Great. Yes. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for all the yeah. questions. Um, Louisa wrote hers in the chat because she has connection problems. So maybe yeah. I may post that to you, Esa, as the last question before we continue on. Um, yeah. Louisa asks, is it true that current regional identity is more based on common problem solving rather than common past and culture? Thank you. Good, uh, very good questions. That actually you you really you really uh, uh, have uh, that's some, something that I uh, it's like uh, very fundamental and 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 uh, now when I'm reflecting and looking back at my, my also journey and and story in what I just told in the Baltic Sea cooperation and and. How I emphasize that that the that we have the common challenges. They are still huge. We need to work together. So is that the only basis, <laughs> kind of a and for this uh, this common identity? Uh, and uh, it, it cannot be obviously. And uh, and uh, that's why that's maybe that's kind of a good good uh, reminder for for us working in the in the Baltic Sea cooperation that 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 uh, that there's the history. And the cultural connections we have that the, the the historical ones. This 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 story is very that we have to cherish that and keep make keep that visible. But we also need to create somehow new. It also the history is very very also complex and difficult in the Baltic Sea region. So we can but still by building on this kind of a cultural connections and similarities we have. We that that's that's a. I, they are still there, and, and I, I think that you all, like in your group, you can see that there's there there are certain kind of a just a just a uh, just a uh, uh, way we way we uh, 
that somehow somehow it's easy for us to 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 to, to work together and uh, and uh, and uh, and I have a dialogue that that we talk kind of the same language, even though we have a different language in each each Baltic Sea region country. Uh, that that, uh, that it's it's very heterogeneous from that point, but still there's some some kind of an interesting connection and, and history, and 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 has has a role here. But uh, but uh, we need to facilitate this kind of a new arenas for 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 like young people or any 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 sectors and and any groups to to just uh, just to. Uh, to to get together around today's topics and uh, create a new somehow build that uh, count on that that we are we are that we can easily work together and we have a kind of a same uh, same kind of a somehow ideological or 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 societal uh, sense uh, or understanding that that what 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 is uh, what are the what are the challenges or what are the opportunities and uh, and uh, what is our role in EU and uh, and uh, uh, but uh, we need to maybe that I take that as a reminder that no don't, don't just talk about the problems and challenges as as a, as a driver for cooperation but a count on on people's somehow ability and uh, kind of a common common uh, some kind of a common uh, even identity I'm a bit careful about talking talking about that. That that identity, but uh, but uh, uh, but there there is there are strong elements of that in place, and let's let's try to uh, build on them. That yes. sounds like a perfect yeah. conclusion and reminder, as you said, to to this part of the session. So thank you so very much, Esa. We really appreciate mm. you being here, thanks, uh, giving us your time and experience. So um, a big round of applause, I'd say, even if we cannot really hear it. <laughs> thank, thank you so much. Uh, I really enjoyed it. And of course, it was a bit kind of a loose this and that kind of a, a presentation. Presentation. I have a very uh, kind of a very interesting uh, kind of a personal inspiring. personal story. More more more. But I, I really appreciate for the opportunity and uh, and wish you a very nice nice meeting and uh, and uh, and and I hope. To have an opportunity to to discuss and also with you in another event for example in the framework of some innovation topic and uh, and uh, and uh, let's keep that in, in contact about that good. francisca and aline yeah so thank you so thank you much, yes. <laughs> i will now run to to to, I understand to, you have to, to exactly. see some, some well-deserved then bye thanks bye bye thank bye you. bye Thank you all again for your questions and great ideas. And uh, yeah, I hope uh, we are all excited now for Aline Meyer, who's project coordinator for regional identity here at the CBSS and who wants to yeah, share a bit about regional identity from our perspective. So um, thank you and welcome Aline. Yeah, thank you, Francisca, for having me. Thank you all for taking your time uh, and I think we started with a really interesting and lively uh, discussion with Esa. Um, it seems to be a Tampere day today. Uh, I have also lived and studied in Tampere so that is my background as well and I love Finland uh, so it's great to be here today also to be here with uh, Esa, with Francisca and all of you. I hope you have a lot of questions later on. Um, I will shortly introduce the region identity portfolio and the CBSS. So you get a better understanding what we are doing here in the Council of the Baltic Sea State. Please feel free to ask your questions, even if they are like, yeah, we can make it a little more interactive. I'll probably ask a question to you as well. You can think about it. I would love to hear some comments afterwards as well, or write it in your chat or in the chat. And yeah, then we start with our little journey through the region identity. I hope it works now, does it? No. Uh, so, ah, there we are. So what is an identity? So it's uh, char characteristics determining a person and identity is formed through interaction with the world that surrounds us. And the identity can create a feeling of togetherness. And as, as I also said now in his last comment, it was like, we here in the Baltic Sea region are a little careful maybe sometimes to use the word identity that comes up quite often. 
And we talk often about a we feeling. Um, I would like you to check out if you feel that you belong to that Baltic Sea region and that you have this feeling of we as a region. Just think about it. Maybe you have a comment later on or you can write it in the chat and say, yes, actually, I feel this we feeling or actually, I've never thought about that. And no, I have a national or a European feeling, but not a feeling about the Baltic Sea region. But if you don't have it yet, we might get to the point that you will get a common we feeling through this project and other activities that we do in the CBSS. So since 1992, when the CBSS was founded, the mission was to create the feeling of togetherness, this we feeling in the Baltic Sea region, to enable a cross-country collaboration. As ESA also said, like it's, it's always difficult to really show why this region is uh, super necessary, but we see it as really, really crucial for the countries in the region to collaborate and to make their voices heard in a bigger European network. So that is why we need a we feeling, but also we need a we feeling for fostering democracy. Democracy is one of our core values that we share in the Council of the Baltic Sea States. And one of the founding, the ideas when we founded the council, when the council was founded, was also to create this European integration so that many of the countries who are now EU members, those here in the region, have not been EU members in 1992. Actually, there were only two. It was only Germany and Denmark who were already EU members. They founded the council and then a lot of other countries in our region joined the EU throughout the 30 years of collaboration that we are now celebrating in the CVSS next year. So the long-term priority regional identity is basically regional identity is the essence of the work of the CVSS and the cross-cut topic. So everyone working here kind of is part of this regional identity creation. Still in our long-term priority, we focus on three main pillars that nobody else is focusing and these three are youth culture and higher education so the long-term goals are to create and improve meaningful youth participation to foster cooperation between higher education institutions and to enhance social and cultural cohesion so we work youth higher education and the culture how do we work? Well, we work through networking. So we have broad networks. We can't do it all on our own, but we work together with different organizations. For example, also the Baltic Institute that ESA just presented or represents, uh, but also a lot of others. And I will show you more later on. And we work, work through projects. So we can either be a lead partner in a project that we applied to. I'm gonna talk about that later as well. We can be a project partner in a project that others are leading. We can be an associated partner, so not being a core member of a project group, but just being associated with the project. Or we can fund all kinds of projects that foster regional identity. So now I'm going to go a little deeper into the three pillars of regional identity. Youth, we have two big projects. You're part of one of them. That's the Baltic Sea Youth Dialogue that has been happening since 2014, when we actually established those three long-term priorities, regional identity, sustainable and prosperous, and safe and secure region. And ever since we had this Baltic Sea Youth Dialogue, we now also have a new project that's called Baltic Sea Youth Platform. You might have heard about that one as well. We established in 2020. I'm mainly coordinating that project, so I'm going to talk a little more about that project. But uh, yeah, if you want to find out more, you can visit uh, the CBSS page and find out more about the projects we are doing. In the youth topic, we are focusing on a meaningful and structured youth participation in policymaking, an intergenerational dialogue between young people and decision makers. So that's like the format like we do it today and the education of future region builders. Same, something we do today as well. 
the network consists of various organizations from really local level to regional level to national level to a macro regional level and even beyond the region. So we are not only focusing on the region, but we really coordinate our work with our sister council, as we call them, the Nordic Council of Ministers, the Arctic Council, the Barents Euro Arctic Council. We work together with other macro regional strategies. So there are four of them in the EU, not only the EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region, we work together with them to enhance our work, to raise more awareness, to create synergies between the different formats. On a macro regional level, we focus on various formats we have already in the region. On a national one, we work together with various uh, youth council, national youth council, but of course also our member states and many other organizations. So these are just some examples out of a really, really broad network. We have these regional components. So we have these sub regions in our region and we cooperate with them. And then on a really local level, we cooperate with universities, we cooperate with uh, youth organizations, we work with, together with local uh, youth councils, the Union of the Baltic Cities that was also mentioned by ESA, and for example, also smaller organizations that we find really interesting or uh, want to support, for example, the Baltic Sea Youth Games. So that brings together some young people every year and they can do sports there, which is also an interesting project and we want to support it so it's part of our network. Now I'm gonna dive a little deeper into the Baltic Sea Youth Platform. That's a project that's very close to my heart. Um, and we established, as I said, in 2020, we want to have a systematic and overarching involvement of young people and connect and boost youth organizations activities so that the youth organizations can connect and actually create synergies themselves without us being like one of those people who will do it, but us just giving like the yeah, first init initial thought or the initial uh, event where they meet. It's very important for us. And then we want to educate young people on various levels. And one event being like one of these like this today, but we have also different activities in the youth platform. And currently we are working on institutionalizing the platform because it's currently an Erasmus Plus project, but we want this to be an essential part of the work of the Council of the Baltic Sea States funded by the member states. And you can be part of that process. Currently, we have an open call on working groups. If you want to check that out, visit the CVSS webpage or visit bsyp.eu and you can find more information there. What we are doing in the youth uh, sector is, for example, events like back-to-back -back events with big formats, like the EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region. We have a youth camp there where we wrote a youth declaration. We had the CBSS ministerial youth edition in 2021, where we wrote a vision statement to the Council of the Baltic Sea States. And we had an event, Baltic Sea Parliamentary Youth Forum this summer, where we worked together with the parliamentarians in the region. So they have their own formats where they meet and we want to bring in young people there. So it's a lot about democracy and it's a lot about um, yeah, young people being part of decision-making in the region. You can ask more information if you want to, otherwise check out our website, find more information there if you are interested in these events. And of course, follow our social media so you will always get updated if we have one of these events coming up and you can apply to them. Other youth activities are, for example, the events you are taking part, the youth dialogue, but also uh, empowering youth for green entrepreneurship, which was a workshop we organized together with uh, the Sustainable and Prosperous Region Unit, so Olga, who you met yesterday. Now, going to culture, so we have the Baltic Sea Culture Cities and Region Project and the Culture for Climate Project, for example, here in the CBSS, um, the goal is to uh, create a cooperation between cultural actors in the region, promotion of cultural understanding and common sense of belonging to the region, and an understanding of cultural backgrounds, differences, and communalities in the region. So that is really, really important as well. And we, again, have a broad network here. We have, for example, the Baltic Sea 
the Baltic Region Heritage Committee that uh, we work closely with. We have Ars Baltica, which is a cultural institute uh, working in, throughout the region. We have the EU strategy for the Baltic Sea Region Policy Area Culture that we closely cooperate, or the Northern Dimension Partnership on Culture. And then again, we have the usual suspects sometimes, the Union of the Baltic Cities and the region. So we always involve also the, re the sub-regional level and the cities. And then national institutes of culture and other organizations that we closely cooperate with. So our activities in the culture sector are also yeah, very uh, many. And we, for example, have this culture for a cities project where we work on a cooperation between cities and want to get a one city that is in a special focus every year and the so-called Baltic Sea Cultural City of the Year. That project is in its seed funding stage at the moment. And again, if you join our working groups, you can join the culture group and work on that project and give youth inputs. What is important for you in this project? Then we have other seminars that we organize. For example, we usually organize at least one seminar with the Baltic Sea Festival that is happening every year here in Stockholm. This year, it focused on culture and democracy. And the session is actually available on the Baltic Sea Festival website. So if you're interested in a culture and democracy workshop, you can check that out as well. Then the last pillar of our work in the Regional Identity Unit is education. Here we have the CBSS summer universities. I guess some of you have maybe attended one of our summer universities. Um, in our education portfolio, we coordinate the networks of higher education institutes. Uh, we are utilizing research results, facts and methods, and we support teaching and research through CBSS expertise. And the network, again, is really broad. We have many uh, higher education institutions we are working with. Um, and we also cooperate with organizations who build these networks, for example, the Baltic Science Network or the Baltic University Program that you might have heard about. But then again, we also focus on working with the institutions directly, especially in the regional identity portfolio. It's a lot of social science institutions. And we do have our higher education activities and projects. We support a project that is called YOPNet, Young People Network for Balticness, that is currently led by the University of Jadansk in Poland. And they are working on Balticness and what it is and how we can strengthen the cooperation between higher education, higher education institutions to foster this regional identity. We also support summer universities. For example, one of them happened this year in St. Petersburg. It was on the topic of changing energy landscape, the EU-Russian energy relations. It happened in August. And there are many more. For example, this week, we will have one in Tartu, actually. Doing that. Then I thought I'm going to move a little away from our, only our portfolio and tell you a little bit about our project support facility as well because we have that and we use it to foster uh, yeah, to fund projects that foster regional identity um, you can apply for projects that can be co-financed with up to 65,000 euros and we have one call every year usually it's in the beginning of the year so check out again our social media and our website they update it and then you can apply for a project that you find relevant for the region and yeah, get that promoted through CBSS and also supported, of course, through our expertise. Then I guess you've heard about that already in the other uh, presentations. We also have that CBSS action plan that was endorsed in 2021 under the Lithuanian presidency. So we have these rotating presidencies. Lithuania had the last one, currently it's the Norwegian presidency. And they gave guidelines to our work. And the guidelines for region identity was actions will focus on fostering active and meaningful participation by young people, nurturing a shared region identity and an enhanced sense of belonging to the Baltic Sea region. So this is what we do today. This is what we do every day, really. And now, just 
to give you a little like summary of what you've been talking, what we've been talking throughout the past days, um, looking forward, looking back 30 years of collaboration in the Baltic Sea region. We have created a well-functioning multi-level governance and we managed to integrate many of our CBSF member states into the EU. We had several waves of collaboration, as also ESA explained, like there were several collaboration waves in a way that the, we started with the Cold War or after the Cold War, then happy EU integration. We had the EU strategy for the Baltic Sea region created, and then we had several uh, problems also, challenges in the region, and the cooperation currently might not be on um, the best level, but it's already it is on a good level and we want to foster it further. We need this collaboration and the Council of the Baltic Sea States is uniquely situated to make this collaboration possible. We are a consensus-based organization, so everything we work on is consensus between all member states. And as you know, we have 11 member states plus the EU as a special member in the CBSS, same rights as all other members. So we are working on that. And if you want to know more about what we achieved so far, I would encourage you to read the reflection paper on the Vilnius Declaration that was uh, published last year during the Lithuanian presidency. And it focused on the past 10 years of collaboration, what has been achieved and what challenges we are still facing. And last but not least, uh, for all of you, maybe interesting is that we also have internship opportunities. For example, we have two internships in, uh, in our secretariat. And many of our members and other organizations do have internship opportunities as well. In the secretariat, you can apply as the core team intern or the media and communications intern if you are interested and learn more about our collaboration, our day-to-day -day business, and what we are doing here in Stockholm. So, yeah, apply for it. We would be happy to welcome you here in Sweden as well. And if you have any questions, you can always ask me. You can send me an email or you can ask right now if you have any questions. Exactly. Thank you so much, Aline. That was <laughs> really great. Um, and as Aline said, the floor is open, please. First question already coming up. You're also great. Carolina, please. <laughs> Uh, why is young people, why, why is youth so important? Why do you uh, make so many projects for youth? What is special in young people? Well, that's not answered in just like two seconds. Uh, but of course, for us, it's especially the young region builders. We want this region to exist even like when the generation that experienced the Cold War and knows exactly why we started this collaboration and this way we are doing it currently, that it's going on, that it's sustainable, it's a long-term thing. And we can only do it if we have a lot of young people who understand the region and understand why it's important to collaborate. We don't want to have any kind of war or any kind of crisis within the region. And how can we prevent that? Only through collaboration. So we want young people to collaborate but also, of course, we want young people's ideas. We want to hear what you want this region to be. We, we see that there is a lot of potential in our region and we want to use that potential. So that's why we want young people to be part of policy making processes so that we get new ideas. Because sometimes after like 30 years of collaboration, you tend to have this certain mechanism, these certain structures, and it's always the same. But young people come in and they bring in new ideas and suddenly you can achieve something you haven't thought about before. So I think that is why we want this. That is my personal opinion more than the council's opinion, maybe, but definitely the council is supporting this. Um, we do it a lot and we do it whenever we can. And if you have new ideas, we are always open to hear your ideas or to help you with a project you want to implement in your city, in your region, or throughout the whole uh, Baltic Sea region. We'd be happy to yeah, have you on board and we need everyone that can. So thank you for the question. I hope that answered it. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. That's nice. Um, Simona. 
Hi, thank you for the presentation. It was really, really interesting. Uh, just out of curiosity, I was wondering, um, do you have any projects uh, that focus on small children? Because you talk a lot about the higher education and, you know, already teenagers, young adults. But I'm interesting, uh, is there work being done for like smaller kids? Because we tend to be a lot more shapeable for the future. Thank you for that question, Simona. Um... Actually, I have to say, like the CVSS is working with these three long-term priorities. We have one uh, long-term priority, safe and secure, and there we have a unit that's called children at risk. So they focus on young or children, basically, and focus especially on their mental health and such issues. And now we establish a project together uh, with them, and we want to create a children and youth advisory board also for a CVSS, but in certain projects. So we are working on that. Um, what I can say from now, from my perspective, is that we started with young people because it's a little uh, easier in a way, or they're, yeah, it, like for the council, it makes sense to work with people who already have an education so that we can work on this intercultural communication and intercultural projects. And it's harder to do that with children only because children you have to reach them on a local level they don't speak english necessarily so that makes it much harder for us to work with them but we encourage our partners for example the union of the uh, baltic cities and other ones to collaborate with children with young people with uh, yeah high schools and such and to do it in their local language which is easier and then we can take it from there but of course we want to have more children involved in the Baltic Sea region and we're working on that as well but it's baby steps we are taking in this direction and if you have ideas again I encourage you also to think about projects and uh, submit them to the, our project support facility we would love to hear it we would love to see it um yeah if you have ideas how we can do better let us know as well like definitely but you're absolutely right we have to start in the early age and I know one person is here in this call. His name is Manvidas. You're going to meet him later on. But he, at some point, in one of the earlier uh, youth projects we had, he was developing, actually, also a children's book that was then called Baltic Sea Belongs to Kids. And until today, we're still working on finding some resources and finding some people to uh, yeah, work with younger children. And last year, you will all receive that at some point. We did this thing, the Baltic Sea uh, Youth Dialogue 2020, and we encouraged young people to write a chapter of a children's book, inspired by Manvida's idea of creating this Baltic Sea Belongs to Kids thing. So that is something we are already doing, but of course we could do more. And if you have more ideas, please feel free to reach out. But yeah, and read through all the uh, children's book chapters that in this book, they are really, really great and inspiring. I hope Thank that you. That's a really interesting answer. Are there any more questions? Anything else you would like to know about regional identity, the CBSS, our youth we work? We have or... one more question in the chat from Hildegard. Thank you for that. Uh, Hildegard is asking how we catch the attention of young people to take part in the projects and programs. So I don't know if you want to start with that, Aline, but uh, otherwise I can add. I can start, you can add to it. Um, yeah. So yes, we utilize our networks. That's, I think, this is a, a really simple answer. We, we work together with so many organizations and then we uh, reach out through them. We, we ask them to share the information and we, of course, target it to certain organizations that we think are relevant for certain projects. But also we have everything on our social media, we have a website, we have all these informations available. And so if we have individuals who are interested, who are not necessarily part of an organization already, I encourage them or you to like our Instagram, to like our Twitter or follow us on Twitter, sorry, or uh, yeah, like our Facebook page and check out our website continuously because all the information is there. 
and we try to reach out to young people and that's uh, how we do it and again if you know about the project and then you want to encourage your peers to be part of that project that always helps a lot like this people to people contact is really really important so if you think okay well i'm not interested in this project but i know somebody who is then just share this information that's really really important for the work in the baltic sea region and now, uh, Francisca, you can add to it if you have some more ideas. <laughs> no, I know it's always already well wrapped if you if you answer the question. But just uh, also to remember how you got informed and how you found out about the Baltic Sea Youth Dialogue now, for example. So um, as Aline said, we are using the networks that are there, uh, reaching out to the youth councils and youth groups that are in the network that we know of are connected to but also trying to um, yeah, reach out to youth that we know through other channels to to those that stick around like manvidas or um, <laughs> to those that we know um, i dare say we are not that old yet either <laughs> so um, and i know that there are at least two or three from my former university in cologne uh, here from the same study program. So that is really cool to see that uh, we find connections, even if you don't know each other personally, there is still some connection through universities, through um, yeah, through you. As Aline said, you can further the ideas and what you know, um, just like we do. Yeah, so just to sum that up, you are an essential part of our work and we need you to be active. We encourage you to be active. And whenever you need something from us that we can provide for you, please just let us know. We are accessible, we are available. And even when this project ends, you can always reach out to us and say, oh, well, I have this idea. Do you think it's worth like applying for? Or can you give me some input? Do you know somebody who could be part of that? And we are happy to provide these things. So that's all I have to say now, because that's we're already over time. <laughs> no, exactly. Uh, that was amazing. A very important point. But just don't jump too far ahead, because we are just getting started with this project. <laughs> Keep that in mind for after the BSYD. But of course, we want to meet with you again uh, very soon. Let's say in five minutes, let's take a short break. Gather your thoughts, um, grab a new snack, a new coffee or tea, and you have the second link in the email that we send. So please make sure to be there to meet your groups, to get to know each other directly. And uh, yeah, first of all, of course, a big round of applause for Aline as well. And then, yay, <laughs> we will see you in in about five minutes in in our group and mentor session. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we have to leave uh, the appointment and then uh, another code, right? Exactly. It was the, the second link and code. Email. Okay, thank you. See you soon. See you soon.